Good day again to you, brothers, sisters, friends, and family. I welcome you back. Hope that you've been doing good. And before we start, I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we can get together one more time. I ask that you bless this word, that it meet the needs, that it quicken us, that we understand, that we come to a better knowledge of you, Lord Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit go before us and minister to each and every one that listens today, Lord Father, that there be lives changed people be healed, and people be set free. In your name, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do today. We thank you for your word in your name. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, as I come to you this afternoon or this morning, whichever it is that you're listening to this, I hope that you get a good time out of this, and I hope that you come to a better understanding of the word. Today, it's going to be an unusual message because as I did this study and as I prayed about this, it really was a change in, in the way this sermon's going to come about. And as I thought about this, I thought I'm going to title this one, Keep Your Eyes on the Prize. And we're going to look today, and I hope you have your Bibles, because if you don't, you're going to miss out on it. Uh, if you got your Bibles, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to look at verses 24 through 31, and that's just a small portion of what this scripture is talking about. So if you got your Bibles, after we get through today, I want you to read the whole thing. But today we're just going to look at the portion verses 24 through 31. And this is going to, we're going to take this scripture and we're going to kind of look at it in an unusual way. I know that it's going to be done differently. And when I, when I thought about this and when I looked at it, it just was just so strange the way the Lord led me to talk about this today. And, um, uh, it just, it was just strange. So I want you to bear with me and I want you to listen to what I'm telling you today. So we're going to look at again at Matthew chapter 14, verses 24 through 31. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answering, answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? As I read that scripture and as I looked at it, I wasn't thinking about exactly what that scripture was meaning at that point in time. But what I began to think about was you and I in life's walk of life. And if you think about Peter being you and me, Jesus being who he is, and the waves being life's cares, health issues, financial troubles, and so on. And the boat kind of representing the church are a safe haven for us. How many times in life do we walk on those waters, such as Peter was, 
and the cares of the world, life's issues, financial situations, health issues. They're waving and they're coming at us from left and right. They're hitting us at full strength. And we get our eyes off of Jesus and we start to look at those things and we begin to worry and begin to become afraid of what's coming at us and why are we going through these issues and, oh Lord Jesus, help us. And we begin to sink into the cares of life instead of focused on Jesus and who he is and what he's promised us that we have that that health issue or that or that safe haven and that help from him that he has saved us that he has promised us that these things are not an issue these things are not what we need to look at but we need to focus on him because he's already promised us that these things are not anything we need to worry about because he's already given us freedom from that. He's already set us free. And if we would just focus on him, he would take us and he would keep us safe, even in the midst of the storms and even in the midst of those things shaving, coming at us and hitting us from all different angles. You know, sometimes health issues, financial issues, the, the kids or our life coming at us from whatever angle and it's all coming at the same time. And it seems like we can't get past it. But if we just kept looking at him, instead of looking at those cares, we wouldn't be sinking in it. We wouldn't be stressed out. We wouldn't be allowing it to take over. And those waves and those issues would become less and less of an issue to us. But we would find that we were set free and delivered from it. And Jesus would take our hand and he would take us to that safe haven or that boat or back to the church where we were set free from those issues, where we were healed and delivered from those issues because Jesus gave us healing. He gave us the promise uh, that's in the word that says that these things are already taken care of. And then our faith would make us strong. Oh, ye of little faith. He wouldn't be saying that to us because our faith would keep us. And so as I looked at this scripture and as I studied this scripture and as I thought about that being the issues instead of the waves of the water, instead of Peter walking on the water, it being you and I, how much different that is not than what Peter was going through at that exact moment. Brothers and sisters, we walked through life and just like walking on the water, just like life being that water, just like the cares of the world being those waves, just like our issues being those waves and how they come at us and how they attack us and how they try to destroy us and try to pull us down and drown us. We, unlike the world, have Christ reaching out to grab us and to pull us to safety and take us to the haven and take us to the church and take us to freedom. We have that promise that's given to us in the word that says nothing no weapon formed against us. Nothing shall prosper. Nothing shall take us down. The waves we can look at also as being the things that Satan throws at us. And he cannot defeat us. So the Bible tells us that over and over and over again. He cannot defeat us because we have Christ as our safe place, as our victory, as our place of, of, of haven, 
We have Christ who takes us back to victory, who takes us into a place of freedom, a place of healing, a place of financial stability, a place where we can be set free, where we want for nothing, even in this world, because he has promised it to us throughout the word. The scripture tells us and has told us over and over and over again that we should want for nothing, that we should not have to beg for bread, that we should not be sick. We should be in health. He tells us that many times over and over again. And all we have to do is believe it and to have the faith to keep our eyes on the prize, which is Christ our Savior. Then we will not sink in the waves. We will not be carried under by those waves and by the water underneath of us, but we will walk and take a hold of the Father and take a hold of Christ, and he will take us back to that safe haven and set us free. He can take us to that safe haven. He has promised us help. He has promised us that we should not want, that we should not be begging bread. How many times do we forget to trust and to have faith? How many times do we let the problems of the world and the things we face come at us and to take us and to grab hold of us and to just totally overwhelm us. We forget who our Savior is. We forget who set us free, who's promised us and who died on the cross for us, whose stripes was bore for our healing. And who promised us that because of those stripes, we were healed. It's his faith. Or it's his promise to us. If only we believe. If only we trust. If we could keep our eyes on the prize. Which is before. Us. He's right there in front of us. He's right here inside of us, truthfully. So unlike Peter, who had to look towards him, we've got one thing that he didn't have. Christ who lives within us. If we just had the faith to let him be free, and let his spirit be free. And people, that, that just kind of sparked within me. I didn't even think about that when I was preparing this message. He's not out there in the water where we have to go to him. Listen to what I'm telling you today. He's not out there. He's right here. He's in us. So we don't even have to walk to it. When the waves of this world start to get you down, when the cares of this world start to overwhelm you, you have Christ within you. If you're a child of God and you've asked him to forgive you of your sins, he lives here. So you don't even have to look to find him. All you got to do is open up and let him take control. Have the faith to believe that what his word says is the truth. And don't doubt that. Don't waver from that. And there's nothing, I mean nothing, that is impossible 
with what God has promised you. Keep your faith strong. Believe in what he's promised you. Luke 10, 19 tells us that Christ gives us power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. First Peter 24 tells us by whose stripes ye are healed. Today, I want you to get your eyes off your, what's going on in your life. The health issues, money problems, family issues, whatever it is today that is taking your eyes off the Father. Get your focus back on where it belongs. Look to the Word. Get your trust and your faith back on Jesus. He is the only answer. He will make a way. He will meet the need. If you can only trust and believe, will you do that today? Get your eyes on the prize. Be strong and courageous. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Trust in him. Believe in him. Praise him and thank him even in the midst of the trials and the tribulations of life, lift your hearts in praise because the answer's on its way. <laughs> the answer's already coming, people. It's already there if you only believe. I know that it's hard sometimes, but I know that he's going to answer your prayer. If you just keep your eyes on him, brothers and sisters, friends and family, I love you. I don't want you to know that Christ loves you too. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. If you need me, if you need prayer, there's always the phone number going across the bottom of the screen a lot. There's an email address. There's you can text me, you can call me, whatever you need. Let me know. I'll pray for you because I do love you and I do care for you. Heavenly Father, as we leave this afternoon, this morning, whatever it is, Father, I ask that your spirit go out and you minister to the needs of the people. Whatever it is, if it's financial, if it's physical, I ask that you send healing, that you send the miracle that's needed. Holy Spirit, right now, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over those that are watching this in the name of Jesus. May lives be changed. May healing be performed. May the miracle be done in the name of Jesus. Satan, you have no hold. You cannot hold. You cannot be in the mix of this. I command that you leave in the name of Jesus. Victory is ours. In the name of Jesus, I praise you, Father, for what you're doing, what you're going to do, and what you've already done, Father. I praise you for the answer. Be with us as we go our way this evening, and be with us, protect us, and guide us. As we come back again someday, Father, always be with us. I love you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, I hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching. Come back again. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all. Bye now.